Welcome to the Instant Tennis Review for lesson number three. This is the video players receive after they've attended the third lesson in the series. The new strokes introduced in lesson three are the volleys. Here we see the forehand volley. Remember, ready position, split, turn to the side, show your racket face like a stop sign, step, make contact, follow through. Remember, the follow through will be much shorter because the volley is a much more compact shot. Keeping your eye on the ball the whole time, after volleying, jump back into your ready position. Now let's take a look at the backhand volley. We encourage you to try to use a one-handed backhand volley, although a two-handed shot can be used. Start in that same ready position, left hand on the throat, pull the racket back, keeping your racket arm straight, step into the shot, turning a little bit more sideways than you would on the forehand, and meeting the ball out in front. After contact, jump back into your ready position. In this next section, let's review how to keep score. Remember, this is one of the three things that we must be able to do to play the game of tennis. Serve, rally, and keep score. In tennis, you must keep track of three things. Points, games, and sets. When speaking of points, it always starts at zero, which in tennis is love. The first point is 15, the second point 30, the third point 40, and the final point isn't even a number, it's just called game. If you're tied at 3-3, three, three, that's called 40-40 or deuce. If you win one more than deuce, you have advantage. If you win when you have the advantage, you win the game. Next, you have to keep track of your games, and when you get to six games, you've won the set. You always have to win by a margin of two, so the final score of the set could be 6-0, 6-1, 6-2, 6-3, or 6-4. If you got to 5-5, five, five, you'd have to win 7-5. If you got to 6-6, six, six, you'd play the special game known as the tiebreak, which is usually played up to seven, in which all players get to serve to decide the set. Remember, you must win two out of three sets in a typical match to win the match. In this next section, we'll go over some basic rules of tennis, mostly as they refer to singles play. And in the next slide, we'll go over some of the differences and strategies for doubles. At the beginning of the match, the first thing that must happen is the decision of who will serve and who will receive and which end of the court you'll start on. This is done by the toss or the spin of the racket. Players choose up or down. One player spins the racket and it lands. We look at the butt cap to see if the logo faces up or down. The winner of the toss, just like a coin flip of heads or tails, gets to determine whether they'll start serving, start receiving, pick which end of the court they would like to be on, or have their opponent choose what they'd like to do first. Most of the time in this instance though, we just decide whether we'd like to serve or receive. As the match begins, the server stands on the right side of the court, which is known as the deuce side, and serves to their opponent, who also stands on their deuce side of the court, which will be diagonal from the server. The player then serves the ball. If it goes into the proper box, the point is played out. If it's missed, it's a fault and they get a second chance. If they miss again, it's a double fault and the server loses the point. Following that point, the players will switch to the opposite side. Now, this is called the advantage court or ad court for short. A point is played from that side in the same manner. We'll keep switching sides after every point until one player has won the game. Following the completion of the game, the server will rotate to the other player. The other thing that must happen here is the players must change ends of the court. Remember that the change of ends will occur on the odd numbers after a game one, three, five, and so on. Remember as a receiver that I must let the ball bounce. I'm not allowed to hit the ball out of the air. If I do this, I will lose the point. After the serve is struck and the ball lands on the return, and the players begin to rally the ball back and forth, they can decide whether they want to play it off the bounce 
or out of the air as a volley or overhead. Remember that the singles court does not include the alley on the side. The single sideline is in and any other line on the court that the ball hits is in, but not the doubles alley. Remember that in an unofficiated match, that each player is responsible for making the calls of in or out on their side of the court. In this next section, we'll go over some more basic rules of tennis, but as they apply to doubles. Remember that the doubles court does include the outside alleys, but not on the serve. The service rotation is established at the beginning of the set. In doubles, the four player serving rotation is decided at the beginning. When the first team serves, they decide who will be the first server of their, for their team. When the other team serves the next game, they decide who the second server will be. The partner of the first server will be the third server and the partner of the second server will be the fourth server. Thus, a serving rotation is established. This serving rotation must be followed until the end of the set. When a new set begins, the serving rotation can be changed. Also at the beginning of the set, the receiving side is determined. This is determined when your team's first time receiving, you decide who will receive from the right or the deuce court and who will receive on the left for the add court. Players will alternate taking turns receiving and must remain on their side when receiving for the entire set. Again, when the set ends, sides can be changed. Following the return of serve, players on each side do not have to hit alternately, such as in other racket sports like table tennis. Some practice recommendations before the next class. We recommend trying to hit alternating sequences of forehand and backhand ground strokes and alternating with volleys as well. I think one of the best ways to practice would be one player standing at the service line with their partner at the net and rallying back and forth using both forehand and backhand. Remember to only focus on one correction at a time. Be sure to practice your serve before the next class and have a great time.